Hello fellow hobbyists, I'm Jason and this is Level Up Hobbies, where I build, paint, and play tabletop games. Now today I'm going to be painting up the new Cruel Boys Merc Knob model from the Dominion box set. Uh, for this model I'm going to be borrowing some techniques that I saw on another YouTuber's channel, that was Marco Frizzoni. Um, I'll go ahead and put the link to his video down below. Uh, he had some really cool techniques painting up his Cruel Boys and so I'm going to borrow some of those and mix them in with mine and see what I come up with. So let's go ahead, let's start painting and I'll see you at the end. Later. I'm going to start this paint job off by taking Citadel's Typhus Corrosion technical paint and I'm just going to dab it just randomly throughout the model where I think there should be some type of like metal corrosion. Um, Again, this is a technical paint, and it has a, uh, a very slight texture that when it's dry, it'll give kind of that mottled, you know, metal look where corrosion has started to uh, uh, take over on there. So let's go ahead and get this on here, and then we'll move on to priming. Now that the typhus corrosion is dried, we're going to start applying the primer, and that's going to be Steinol Res Black Primer. And primers do a great job at just homogenizing the entire surface and giving you a nice base layer to start building up your colors on. And after the primer, we're moving on to a, a white Zenithal highlight using Liquitex Titanium White Acrylic Ink. Next I'm going to use some Plague Bearer's Flesh through my airbrush and just lay down an initial green base coat for this orc skin color. Uh, now this is like a, a bright green gold which is uh, a, a different step from my usual subdued greens that I use for my orc skin tones. But this came out beautifully. Now I'm going to use a, a darker sap green through my airbrush and just build up those lower shadows throughout the model. And this different green really uh, helps that, that top layer, uh, the Plague Bear's flesh, like really pop. Next I take some Gorgorunta fur and Fire Slayer flesh contrast paints and I use them to fill in the different leathers that he's stitched together for his clothing.
and now I'm taking snake bite leather and wildwood contrast paints and I'm just hitting those other browns that I might have missed. Uh, that's going to be his staff and then straps and a couple bags on that uh, are hanging around him. And we're going to step away from those earth tones and start adding some red to this standard that he's carrying. We're using some Blood Angels red contrast paint, and that's really going to pop off of this uh, this zenithal highlight that we've applied on this, this standard here. Now I take Exhaust Manifold from Vallejo Metal Color and I just start painting in all of these like steel pieces throughout the model. This is a, a really nice warm uh, steel color and I think it came out great uh, on the model. It's such a smooth paint to work with. And as I'm layering on this metallic color, it's really making all of that typhus corrosion detail um, that I put on initially start to stand out. So you can really see uh, the work that you did previously starts to show. Now I'm moving on and adding some Balthazar gold to uh, make some, other the, some of these other metal bits really stand out. This is a very nice base for any type of brass or gold color that you're going to go to. It really just depends on how you highlight it up. Now for this wicked looking tongue that they've slapped onto the standard. I take some Baraknar Burgundy and just put down a nice base layer on here. Um, this, this has great coverage for any type of you know, reds or purples that you're going to work with.
And now it's time to start applying an oil wash to the entire model. I mix up two different uh, washes. One is green and black for the skin. And then the second one is brown and black. And I, I just apply these over the entire model covering all of the all of the paint that has been previously applied and if you've never done an oil wash before your first impression after you start putting it on is what did I just do uh, but it you just be patient and it turns out great in the long run Hey folks, quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video, please like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment. Don't forget, hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I publish new material. All the likes, all the subscriptions really help the channel out, so don't hold back. Um, Alright, let's get back to the video. Thanks. And as you can see, it, it actually doesn't look bad right now. I mean, it's a little dark, but once we start wiping off the excess. I just have some makeup applicators here. Um, just slowly, just carefully, you know, wipe off that extra excess oil paint. And the oil paint would have, you know, settled in the recesses and you're just catching those highlights and bringing it back up to uh, that standard that you'd applied previously. But you have these really nice, beautiful shadows and transitions that um, it's, I don't know, it's like magic in a bottle here. Now, once that wash is dried, I take a, uh, a brown, a, uh, a titanium buff, and a green, and I start mixing up some highlights. I actually, I added uh, some titanium white to this mix also to uh, brighten them up a little bit. But I just take and uh, mix these up on a palette, uh, have them ready, and then start applying them uh, throughout the model. And as you're applying these highlights, be very careful with how much you add, because a little bit goes a long way. And you can just add some you know, little spots of highlight. And then I'll go in with a clean, dry brush, and I'll just start fading those in, just uh, working it into the surrounding area, whichever direction. And you want to work it in whichever direction the highlight would be in. So if it's on a cheekbone, you know, you brush it up into the back, you know, just um, bring it up away from the shadows. As you can see, it's just a light feathering of that oil color. And the more you work at it, uh, the more you'll wipe off and blend in. So um, don't worry initially. Um, it looks kind of weird. You got these bright spots all over it. But in the long run, it'll pay off.
Now I'm going to take a little bit of Citadel's Wild Rider Red, and I just start working in some highlights on the, uh, the face on this standard here. Uh, just hitting the edges and, you know, uh, any nicks, scratches that I may want to add that aren't already there. Um, this is a nice highlight for that. Next, I take some Stormhost Silver, and I'm going to start highlighting up these steel pieces. And for this, I'm just going to add you know, dots and scratches and dings wherever I think there, there might be some type of battle damage. Um, I don't want to do any real edge highlights unless it's an area that takes a lot of damage uh, pretty constantly, so like on the, the edges of his weapon. so. And now I take some Canoptic Alloy, and I use this to start highlighting up those brassy gold areas. I apologize that this is out of focus. Um, this Canoptic Alloy, has it's quickly become one of my favorite colors to highlight up any brass colors. Um, it kind of took the place of, and what was the Sikorax Bronze or something, Sikorax. Um, I think it's a much smoother color to work with. And for any of the parts of leather that I, I didn't highlight previously, I take some Bane Blade Brown and just start adding some edge highlights and scratches with, the, uh, with that color. Um, this is mostly the straps along his, around his neck and on his legs and arms. And to highlight this vicious looking tongue, I take some Gene Stealer Purple and I do an initial highlight layer and then I mix in some Cadian Flesh Tone in with the Gene Stealer Purple and do a final highlight. That's what you're seeing here. And now I take some Vallejo Smoke and I thin this out and just kind of work it into parts of the metal that I want to have uh, a slight uh, dirty, uh, dingy look. Uh, this smoke, it, it works really well for aging metals.
and I'm going to have to call him done. So I couldn't find any hollow base blanks from like secret weapon and stuff because they are sold out. Um, they had some for like the blasted wetlands. Um, I might end up getting those, but for now I just made my own. Uh, not the hollow blank base, but my own like kind of marshy, marshy base here. I just used some uh, tacky glue with dirt and made a mud paste and just kind of built up a, a layer around the edge. And then I used some gloss um, medium and mixed in a little bit of Plague Bearer's Flesh to add a little bit of color like for the, the center. And then it all has a nice uh, glossy, wet appearance to it. Overall, I'm very happy with how this model turned out. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really nice looking model. The oil wash really just ties all of those colors together. And I'm not usual, usually one to use a bright green on my orcs. But this was, yeah, that's all I can say. Like this was, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again. Thanks again for joining me here on Level Up Hobbies as I painted up this Cruel Boys Merc Knob. Now, I borrowed some techniques from a fellow YouTuber, Marco Frizzoni, and uh, they really turned out great for my model. Um, I'm glad that I was looking around for some inspiration because I was debating on which direction to go with the skin, and I think this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting up my other models. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and like and subscribe down below and hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I publish my new videos. Thanks again, and remember, build, paint, and play tabletop games. Later, guys.